We're out here near the watering hole, hoping to catch a sight of a variety of birds that may come across our path. Let's see what happens. Oh, what is this? Hey everyone, if you're interested to attract more birds to your garden or campsite or wherever you might be in nature like I am, stick around. We're going to build today a DIY bird fountain that doesn't require power or solar to keep operating. Some of the materials that I'm going to use will include what I'm about to go through now. You can customize or sub in, sub out, any, sub out any of these materials that you see fit based on what's your preference or what's aesthetically pleasing. The reason I've chosen some of these materials is because we're full time in a motorhome in the summers. And so portability, uh, pack up and tear down of this fountain is going to be important to us. If you're, let's say, building it for your backyard garden, you may want to pick more aesthetically pleasing materials especially if it's going to be placed in a permanent or semi-permanent spot. All right, first off, we're gonna select the reservoir for our water. And I've seen a lot of people use the full-size five-gallon buckets. Again, I'm in a motorhome, so I've picked one that's about half the height of normal. Again, for space requirements where we're living and uh, for portability. Another item that you're gonna use in conjunction with that is one of these uh, snack trays or chip and dip kind of trays. You get them at uh, Walmart or the dollar store, places like that. As far as five gallon buckets go, you can get them all around. Uh, I find a good source for them and where I found this one is a uh, bakery. Bakeries go through tons of buckets like this, whether it be this one's blueberry filling. So it could be shortening or uh, any variety of things. And they usually have them sitting around there. Um, this one was already clean for me when I showed up and I think they asked $2 for it, so. Coincidentally, this tray was the same price, $2. And the idea here is going to be to use some of this semi-rigid tubing here that I have from my past experience in aquariums. And we're going to attach it to this small USB powered submersible pump. Uh, I'll have links below this video for you guys if you wanna grab one of these. But uh, in Canada, I think I paid just under $20 for these for this and in the US you'll have uh, better prices available to you in a wider selection. So I'll leave links for both countries below. But the idea here is you put the submersible pump in the bottom of your bucket when the water's full, you run the rigid straw from the pump poking out through the center of this tray, which I'm going to build a, a hole for that and poke it through. And then you, you punch uh, more holes in this tray on the outside for the draining of the water to return into the bucket. And so the idea is, is that you've got a, a self-refilling fountain that can run all day. And you might be thinking, well, how does it run all day? Uh, how do you run this USB powered pump? And uh, the idea behind that is, is you grab yourself one of these power banks. We'll have a link below the video here. And what this one is and why I chose it is because it has a dual charging system. So this whole front face of it here is a solar uh, panel. So you can charge it via solar or you can charge it with the little mini uh, input here. You can plug it into any wall charger uh, or in my case, an inverter, but any normal power adapter and you can charge this thing. So we bought the charger, the, uh, the power bank, I think it was, uh, yeah, 26,800. Uh, whatever the power measurement is here, but it's pretty large. I think you can get slightly larger ones in the States. And again, I'll leave links below. But uh, the idea here is that on the sunny days, this will give you so much power that even if you had several cloudy days in a row, your fountain will run continuously. And uh, if you wanted to, this will have more than enough power to charge things like tablets and cell phones as well. So it's got two USB uh, inputs on it, and then it's got that micro uh, sorry, two USB outputs on it for charging things and then the one micro input for charging the power bank itself. All right, so now it just uh, comes down to plugging the USB powered pump into the power bank, which when I got this right out of the box, it worked already. So the power, the, I don't know if you can hear that, put it to the microphone. 
But these uh, little pumps, they don't require very much power and these power banks receive enough power to run the pumps pretty much right out of the box. So the idea is have this hooked up, the power bank hooked up to the pump, pump in the bucket, running. Find a place uh, where you can have this tucked out of the elements if your um, fountain is outside so that if it, if it rains, this will stay dry and operational. What I'm going to use, I've seen people use uh, things like Dremel tools or soldering guns uh, to make their holes. One thing I would suggest is that you make the hole slightly smaller than your tubing so that the tubing is secure in there. Now, if you happen to make the hole too big, it's no problem. You can just glue it or put some, some sort of adhesive or caulking in the, um, in the slot that you've created so that you can have a snug fit. What I'm gonna use, because we're living life on the road here, and it's a little bit uh, piece as you go. I think this nail here is about the size or slightly smaller uh, than the tubing I'm going to use. So I'm gonna heat this up and I'm going to melt holes where I think I need them. All right, so the idea here is we're gonna hopefully heat this nail up enough to melt this dish. Uh, but not hot enough to start the motorhome on fire or burn myself. So hopefully this is a low event sequence of the video, but uh, if things get out of hand, you might get a chuckle as well. All right, let's see if we got the heat we need here. That's money. Do a few of our drain holes while we're at it. How many drain holes do you think we should do? What you want to do is considerably more than uh, the water outflow so that you can keep a pretty shallow um, reservoir in here because birds, while they like water and they like moving water, they don't necessarily like to be up to their beaks in it. They more like to be sort of ankle or mid knee deep they're kind of scaredy cats a little bit so they love the water but the ones that we're looking to attract they're not necessarily looking to swim we want the water to drain faster than it pumps in is the idea all right let's see if our tube here will go through and it looks like my uh, center hole needs to be slightly uh, enlarged so that we can slide the tubing through it. So let's try to do that. Okay, that's a nice snug fit. You can see it coming through the uh, center there and that's wherever we place that height wise, that's definitely gonna stay in place. All right, so now the only thing left to do is complete construction of it, make sure it's operational and then uh, go set it out and see what happens with it. All right, let's give this contraption a quick field test. See if she's gonna run. Once we're finished with the demo, I will uh, come back and cut this cord to length. But for our demo purposes, we just kind of want to see if it's going to work. at all so some folks will uh, put a notch in the side of the bucket here so the cord lays flush and creates a better seal with uh, with the platter and then uh, a lot of people will place well I'm going to I'll place a few rocks in and amongst the fountain to uh, in addition to weighing the platter down, it gives our little friends something to 
uh, sit on while they're having a good time. Obviously, I'm going to customize this a little later after we get this uh, trial run taken care of. So now I'm going to take this power bank, plug the uh, pump into it, and see what we get. That looks like a bird fountain to me. Yeah, so that's pretty much exactly what I want. I'll probably lift the tube up a little bit so that we can have a little bit more of a water spout. And it looks like the drain holes are gonna end up working out okay. So yeah, I'll do a few modifications to it and set it out see what it brings. We're out here near the watering hole, hoping to catch a sight. Um, a variety of birds that may come across our paths. Let's see what happens. Oh, what is this? A knobby kneed, pale faced flamingo, never before filmed in this region. Captured for the first time ever thanks to our cutting edge cameras. An excellent cameraman covered in ants and getting the nether region to nibble down right now. This is an extraordinary sight, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the bait that this bird has evolved over millions and millions of years. Its extra knobby knees make it unpalatable to predators. I highly recommend buying one of these bird fountains as you may also enjoy sightings like these just outside your campsite.